We're grateful he's here. And Vice Chairman Brady will do his opening, and then we'll get to questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chairman, for holding today's hearing. I, I appreciate the witnesses being here today. And I agree with you, this committee must examine the whole picture, understanding both the benefits of extending the payroll tax cut and long-term unemployment benefits and their unintended consequences. There is strong bipartisan consensus in Congress to extend both of these expiring provisions through the end of this year. However, serious differences remain over how we should pay for these expensive extensions and whether we should reform the outdated unemployment insurance program. As popular as the payroll tax holiday may be, economists disagree about its effectiveness as an economic stimulus. However, economists agree that Social Security faces serious and growing cash flow deficits. I want to refer to this chart over here that shows the cash flow deficits for Social Security over the next decade. And in the black area of that graph, you can see what has happened as a result of deferring one-sixth of payroll tax revenue away from the Social Security revenue stream. It creates a significant sinkhole that exacerbates Social Security's cash flow problems. Non-cash accounting transfers from the general fund cannot alleviate these cash flow problems. Last year, the U.S. government had to borrow $142 billion from investors, including foreign countries like China, to pay Social Security benefits to our seniors. Congress must fill this sinkhole to ensure that we'll be able to pay promised Social Security benefits. That's why House Republicans are insisting that Congress must offset any loss of payroll tax revenue with actual cash savings in other areas of the government, not simply accounting gimmicks. House Republicans will protect this vital program from debilitating cash diversions with common sense savings that have had strong bipartisan support. As for unemployment, clearly economic policies the Obama administration didn't produce a vigorous recovery for which hardworking taxpayers had hoped. Tens of millions of Americans are struggling to make ends meet. Millions can't find a full-time job, and millions more can't find any job at all. Even worse, other millions have simply given up and stopped looking for work, leaving us with the lowest workforce participation rate in nearly three decades. Our priority must be to create a far stronger economy in which American businesses will have the confidence to make investments in new buildings, equipment, and software, expand production, and create millions of new well-paying jobs to get this economy back on track. As for unemployment insurance, we should reform this program and refocus it on the common sense goal of getting people back to work sooner rather than just paying benefits. House Republicans have passed legislation that would, one, renew the long-term federal unemployment benefits for the rest of this year while gradually reducing the maximum duration of benefits to 59 weeks. We require recipients to search actively for work from day one. We know the longer that people are unemployed, the harder it is for them to find new employment. Under existing law, beneficiaries may collect unemployment checks for a year and a half without really having to look for a job. In some states, they don't have to search for a job at all. That's unacceptable. This bill in the House, passed in the House with bipartisan support allows the state to, states to adopt innovative programs to match beneficiaries with local jobs. We also require those on unemployment without a high school degree to work on earning a GED. Adults without high school diplomas have a very hard time finding and keeping a job. They are often the last hired and often the first hire, fired. We also end the federal prohibition against states testing applicants for illegal drug use. Drug screening ensures that recipients will be able to take the jobs that they are offered. And as we hear today and have heard today, long-term unemployment benefits have clearly helped families in need, but there is a cost as well. Two recent studies found that extending the duration of benefits actually increases the unemployment rate. A study by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco found the unemployment rate at the end of 2009 would have been nearly half a percentage point lower, 9.6 percent instead of 10, if jobless benefits hadn't been extended beyond their usual 26 weeks to as much as 99 weeks. According to a Brookings Institute paper, the 2011 extension of long-term unemployment insurance raised the number of unemployed in January of last year by between point 0.02 and 0.6 percentage points. 
That translates into between 300,000 and 900,000 additional workers without jobs. Repeated extension of long-term benefits are also threatening the solvency of the entire unemployment system, as Commissioner Everson has pointed out. States have borrowed over $38 billion from the Federal Government to cover their shortfalls, and under current law, repaying these Federal loans and rebuilding State trust fund balances would require an unprecedented payroll tax increase in nearly every State. These higher taxes would punish the very job creators that we hope will add new jobs to hire the unemployed. And to conclude, we must move forward with a bipartisan agreement to extend the payroll tax holiday and long-term unemployment benefits. But at the same time, we must also adopt common sense reforms to make unemployment insurance program work better and avoid adding to our unsustainable federal debt. Uh, I have looked forward to the uh, testimony of the uh, uh, witnesses today and to the questions as well. Chairman. Vice Chairman Brady, thank you very much. I'll start. The, um, the questions will go. Um, we'll do five.